Shalom family, we're here with another one. Today, we would like to share what we found on the pagan holiday we know today as Valentine's Day. Now, we know that not everyone celebrates this day, and we also know that some people do think that it is a special day to show appreciation and love. Either way, we think that this day needs to be spoken on because it is something that is pushed out to us, and as believers in the Most High, we have to be watchful of what we allow in our lives and what we choose to participate in. Valentine's Day is a curious holiday, to say the least, because the origins are mysterious and not fully known. What we have found is that though the origins are debatable, there are things that we see connected to this day that definitely show it isn't something that a true believer of the Most High Yah should celebrate. We will share what we have found and discuss why we feel that there is an important reason for knowing what these pagan originating holidays are all about. With that being said, let's get started. Like we stated in the intro, it is not and has not been easy to pinpoint the exact origin of this holiday. Some historians believe that it may have started with a pagan Roman feast and festival called Lupercalia. Lupercalia was considered a fertility festival dedicated to the false god Faunus, who also was known as the grandson of Saturn. It was a time of debauchery, blood, rowdy drunken revelry, and sacrifices. It was believed to have started on or around February 13th and continued through February 15th. According to History.com, during this pagan festival, the Order of Roman Priests, members of the Lupercai, gathered at a sacred cave where the founders of Rome, infants at the time, were cared for by a she-wolf or Lupa. The priests would sacrifice a goat for fertility and a dog for purification. They would cut the hides of the sacrificed animals into strips, dip them into the sacrificial blood, and take to the streets gently slapping both women and crop fields. It was welcomed by women because they believed it would make them more fertile in the coming year. Later in the day, according to legend, all the young women's names in the city were put in an urn or jar. The city's bachelors would choose a name and become paired for the year with his chosen woman. These matches often ended in marriage. We can see how this could have been considered the origin of Valentine's Day because of the hookup aspect. Another thought on how it came to be a holiday is because some believed Emperor Claudius II executed two men both named Valentine, a name that was considered popular at that time, on February 14th in different years in the third century. The first of the Valentines was said to have healed the blind adopted child of the head of the household causing the household to convert to Christianity. He was sentenced to stay at that house and because of the conversion, he was beheaded. The second Valentine was said to have healed the crippled son of a pagan scholar causing the pagan family to convert as well. He too was killed because of that conversion once it got back to the emperor. The Catholic Church honored their martyrdom with the celebration of St. Valentine's Day. Two things that stuck out to us. One, this information is mainly based off of a legend. And two, this information doesn't seem like a reason to celebrate love. Lupercalia was said to have survived the initial rise of Christianity, but was outlawed because it was deemed quote unquote unchristian at the end of the fifth century when Pope Gelasius declared February 14th, St. Valentine's Day. It wasn't until later that it became what is known as the holiday associated with love. Just like all the other pagan festivals, the early Christians were believed to merge Lupercalia and St. Valentine's Day as a way to expel the pagan ritual. Of course, like the other times they tried that, it didn't work. As of this year, after doing research, Lupercalia is one of the many festivals still being celebrated to this day. 
So how did this turn to what we know of today? According to History.com, it is commonly believed in France and England that the 14th of February was the beginning of the bird mating season, which added to the idea that Valentine's Day should be for romance. Another possible reason for it being what it is today is because of poet Geoffrey Chaucer. He was said to be the first to record St. Valentine's Day as a day of romantic celebration in a poem called Parliament of Fowls. Let's look at a few things connected to Valentine's Day, starting with Cupid. When you do a simple Google image search of Cupid, what comes up? It will come up with a naked or semi-naked childlike being with wings. Cupid is portrayed as a half-dressed or naked being called a cherub, who usually is armed with a bow and arrows. He is known for shooting his arrows at unsuspecting people to connect them with other people to make them a couple. To some, this sounds and seems cute and innocent. It is not. Cupid was a Roman god, and to the Greek, the god of love, called Eros. Eros was said to play with the emotions of gods and men, using golden arrows to incite love and leaden arrows to sow division. During the Hellenistic period, he began to be portrayed as the young troublemaking chubby child. We will come back to Eros a little later on in the video. Another thing connected to Valentine's Day is the use of certain colors. They are red, white, and pink. People think that the colors are just colors associated with love. Here is what we say to that. According to who? Who told them that? Here's what we have found on the colors associated to Valentine's Day. The red. This color really represents the blood sacrifices done during Lupercalia and it is the more dominant of the three colors. White. It came to be a symbol because it was the color of the milk, possibly goat milk, that was used to clean the blood from the sacrifices, and it represented new life and procreation. Pink. It most likely symbolizes the mix of the combination of red and white. Take a look at what we found out about the colors and what they mean today. Color plays an important role in our lives. It can influence our emotions, hold symbolism, meaning, and in some cases, even elicit a psychological response. This is according to a blog on alwaystheholidays.com. Here is a summary of what they have to say about the colors of Valentine's Day. Red symbolizes romance, passion, lust and desire. It is also a color linked to luck, weddings, and marriage. Also, two of the major historical events surrounding the holiday heavily featured blood. White. It symbolized purity, innocence, eternal love, and love for the divine. Because this is connected to paganism, they are not talking about the Most High Yahuwah, but the pagan gods. Pink. It symbolized playful, soft, and sweet version of love often associated with childhood and young love. We believe that the colors that are seen and used are for the sole purpose of evoking those who do not use discernment and are not aware to celebrate and accept the wickedness of this pagan holiday. You will notice the use of pink being a soft, playful association with youth and children. This might have been done to trick people to make the holiday seem innocent, even though, like we said, it is not innocent. Now that we went over the origins and some of the things connected to Valentine's Day, we now want to discuss a few reasons why we as believers should not celebrate in any of these days that have been declared holidays, focusing now on Valentine's Day. Reason number one. Celebrating these holidays are an abomination to the Most High, despite of it being the romantic and love holiday. Deuteronomy 18, 9-14 When you come into the land which Yahuwah your Elohim is giving you, 
do not learn to do according to the abominations of those Gentiles. Let no one be found among you who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices divination, or a user of magic, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For whoever does these are an abomination to Yahuwah. And because of these abominations, Yahuwah your Elohim drives them out from before you. Be perfect before Yahuwah your Elohim. For these nations whom you are dispossessing, listen to those using magic and to diviners. But as for you, Yahuwah your Elohim has not appointed such for you. Now, we are not going into possess the land like our forefathers, but the scripture still applies to us today, and that is not to learn the ways of Gentiles, because it is an abomination to Yahuwah. We are not to celebrate anything that has deities connected to it, even if the name and some of the ritual practices have changed. We are not to do as the Gentiles do either. We are a made-apart people, separated as children belonging to the Most High Yah. These things are detestable to the Most High, which brings us to our next reason. Reason number two. This day is focused on carnality, and it's rooted in sin. Carnality means fleshly lust or desire, or the indulgence of those lusts, sensuality, grossness of mind or desire, love of sensual pleasures. The origins of this day, Lupercalia, was a celebration of eroticism, pagan sex rituals, drunkenness, and other sexual activities. All of what was just mentioned does not line up with our beliefs as followers of the Most High. We are to walk according to the Ruach, or spirit, not fulfilling the lust of the flesh, and this holiday is purely rooted in pleasing the flesh. Galatians 5, 16 through 25. But I say, walk habitually in the Ruach, seek him and be responsive to his guidance, and then you will certainly not carry out the desire of the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for Yahuwah and his precepts. For the sinful nature has its desire, which is opposed to the Ruach, and the desire of the Ruach opposes the sinful nature. For these two, the sinful nature and the Ruach, are in direct opposition to each other, continually in conflict, so that you as believers do not always do whatever good things you want to do. But if you are guided and led by the Ruach, you are not subject to the law. Now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, total irresponsibility, lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote heresies, envy, drunkenness, righteous behavior, and other things like these. I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of Yahuwah, but the fruit of the Ruach, the result of his presence within us, is love, unselfish concerns for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such things 
there is no law. And those who belong to Hamashiach Yahusha have crucified the sinful nature together with its passions and appetites. If we claim to live by the Ruach HaKadosh, we must also walk by the Ruach with personal integrity, reverential character, and moral courage, our conduct empowered by Ruach HaKadosh. Reason number three, the love associated with Valentine's Day is not the love of the Most High. The God of this holiday is Cupid, AKA Eros. This is what the origin of Eros means according to edamononline.com. God of love, God or personification of love, carnal love, to desire, urge to self-preservation and sexual pleasure, to be in love with, to desire passionately or sexually. One of the words connected to eros is erotic, and its meaning is from French erotike, from Greek erotikos, caused by passionate love, referring to love, from eros, sexual love. Earlier form was erotico in the 1620s. Other words many may know that comes from eros is erogenous or erogenous zone. And you can pause the video and read this if you want. The love connected to this day is about sexual or lustful love. Eros is carnal love, meaning to desire passionately or sexually, erotic love or desire, devoted to or tending to arouse sexual love. It is basically love that only pleases fleshly desires. Yah's love is not a love of pleasure. It is pure and perfect. It is unconditional, lasting, and never fails. People may use the excuse of this day being innocent because they don't indulge in the original practices of the holiday like it was done, and they may include their children in the celebration. Also, children have come to participate in this holiday through school and other functions. That doesn't make it innocent. It is rooted in wickedness, and the fact that children are involved doesn't change it nor the fact that someone is not doing the actual practices of the holiday's origins. What many people don't realize is that there's a spiritual aspect to these man-made holidays, just like there's a spiritual aspect to the Most High's Kodesh days. When a person participates in these wicked days, it is the same thing as saying to whatever spirit connected to that specific day, I give you access to my life because unclean spirits are connected to all these wicked holidays. You don't want to give these unclean beings any place to wreak havoc in your life. Some of the issues that may be taking place in people's lives could be because they come into agreement with these deities as they celebrate these wicked days. If you celebrate these days, you give permission to the evil spirits to have access to your life. If you have celebrated these holidays or are still celebrating these days, you should renounce them all, which means to disown, to disclaim, to reject, to refuse, to own or acknowledge as belonging to, cast off or reject as a connection or possession, to forsake as to renounce the world and all its cares. It's time to cancel and void that agreement. Repent of that connection and hold on to what scripture says in 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Mashiach and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? 
What agreement is there between the Mishkan of Elohim and idols? For we are the Mishkan of the living Elohim. As Elohim has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their Elohim, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says Yahuwah. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says Yahuwah El Shaddai. This is by no means all of the information out there concerning this day. We wanted to present enough info to show that this is not a day established by the Most High, nor is it a day that we believers should participate in. Thanks for watching. We do hope this video has been helpful to you. We ask that you please like this video, share it, and subscribe to our channel as this helps us to reach more people for y'all. May y'all baruch you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May y'all turn his face toward you and give you peace. We love you and we are praying for you. Until next time, family. Shalom. Shalom.